Welcome back into the shop, you guys. I hope you are all doing well. This is going to be the start of a brand new project, and that is going to be a nice spice box. This is actually going to be built out of material that I picked up completely for free off of one of my relatives. The wood itself is actually called Italian Alder. So right here is the pile of all of the material that I have to work with. All this material right now is at a full four quarter, one inch thick. And that also kind of gets me into why I'm actually choosing to build a spice box with this material. The majority of the pieces for this project aren't really any bigger than 12 inches. It is definitely far easier to build smaller projects with material like this when it's all warped, cracked, and has a lot of knots in it. So let's start cutting up some of these boards and see what we can pull out of them. There's a lot of soot and dirt on them. I don't want any of that to scratch up the nice cast iron surfaces. Here is our first batch of milling. Let's get to it. So I just laid out the first batch of boards that we just finished up milling here and I have to say that this Italian alder looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean there's two main colors. There's kind of like this lighter tannish color and then this more of like a gray color that I only think is possible to achieve when you actually dry it. I guess that could be from water or just them sitting outside. If you know, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to actually know more about it. So the reason why I have all the boards laid out now is because I want to get the first two boards that are the nicest. That way they can be the two sides because those are going to be the most visible and they're the largest pieces that I need to come up with. Our two sides are just under nine inches. So I'm going to need two boards about four and a half inches. Side one, side two, top and bottom. That's going to be our base construction. This whole box that I'm about to glue up right now is going to be dovetailed. After those are glued up, we'll then start cutting some of the other parts out of these pieces. So I got a few more of the boards laid out here. I'm actually going to resaw two of these boards down to a quarter inch on the bandsaw. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw, cut these down to a quarter inch, and then go from there. <laughs> Okay. 
So this is going to be dovetailed all together and then the rest of the components are going to be dadoed and mitered on around it. Before I go any further, there's actually something I really need to do. When I built this workbench many years ago, this apron actually runs downwards another six inches below the top. So what that means is you can obviously slide a stool under, but when you actually want to sit here and do detailed work like dovetails, my knees always, you know, <laughs> they hit the underside just like that. And I think I want to actually notch out a section of this so I can actually slide in here comfortably and be able to work. I could have done this when I built the workbench, but no, I had to wait five, six years. over the edges and stuff but let's first see if it works see any reason why it shouldn't oh yeah that is much better I mean that actually looks much better as well you can see I added you know just a very crude but decorative curve right there and also right there for now I think this will work so I can get back to work that on one of these pieces I actually cut about halfway through not all the way and the reason for that is because we're actually gonna have a mortise and tenon all the way up at the top right here but we only want it to come you know the distance of this piece right here so what I'm first gonna do here because the dovetails are now done is actually come up to here cut that and then cut the mortise and then also the tenons that way we can then glue up this box with the dovetails and the mortise and tenons. So that is the next piece of joinery that is gonna go into here. cut right here it's time to add a groove on the back side where our back panel will be able to slide up and down so this is going to be about halfway of 5 8 by a half inch I'm going to cut this down on the router table you can see that we're increasingly getting a little bit more complicated with this to make this a little bit more tricky we're actually going to have to run grooves in this direction in order to fit in the spacers where the drawers are going to go so i'm still going to be doing this on the router but now instead of the pieces running like this they're instead going to have to run in this direction i still need to use a fence system with this in order to space out the dados correctly so i've been sitting here brainstorming on how i want to do this and i have the minor gauge that came with the table saw and it fits in this groove here to run in this direction. Now what I'd like to do is actually make a small sled that attaches to this miter gauge and then is screwed into the back there. That way I can rest the piece on it and then slide it along. So before I do any more cutting on these bits I need to actually make that sled. So even though this only took maybe like five minutes to make, it's 
not gonna work. And the reason for that is because this jig that came with the saw has a little bit of slop in it and across nine or 10 inches, it's way too much. So instead, what I'm going to use is my Incra. I was able to slide this section over to where it passes by the router bit right there. And then I also added a stop block here and a couple of markings right here and right there. That way I can index the piece against the router bit. So we'll try this out, see how it goes, and hopefully I don't mess this up. I put so much work into these pieces right here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a scrap piece first and then run these through. So if you look closely, can probably notice something a little bit off with this piece. The pins are smaller up here and they're fatter down here. On one side, I completely reversed the dovetails. So essentially what I did, I had one piece in that direction and then another piece in this direction. So I went ahead and glued up a brand new panel and cut it to size. And this is gonna make up our new bottom piece for our dovetail box. This is funny. This is really funny. I just cut this piece down to what I thought was the correct size and that I thought it was the bottom, which is seven and a half inches, but I really was supposed to cut this piece to eight inches, which is the top piece here. <clears throat> okay, so I guess what I'm gonna have to do is glue up another piece on this because I don't have any more stock. I'm gonna go ahead, clamp this up, and wait and sit in my mistakes. It's just kind of like the dovetail gods telling me I need more practice, which I probably do. Prior to gluing all this up, I first need to lay out and route out this section right here on the top piece. And the reason for this is going to be for the hidden drawer that we're actually going to incorporate into this. And the reason why I have to do it now is because once this is all together, I can't do this. So that is going to be where I'm going to end part one of this series. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually assemble all of these parts. This is already assembled, but we'll put this inside of the box, get it together, do the door, the drawers, and all that fun stuff. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this first part in building this fun spice box. There's a lot of joinery. It's taking a lot of time to get to this point, and I hope that you guys are enjoying it. So be sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, that way you get notified when I post the next video. That's all I got for this one, and I will see you in the next video.